infinite complacency. People went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Welcome to another episode of Into the Fray. If you're new here, I hope you're enjoying it enough to head to your podcatcher of choice to rate and review the show. This helps it aggregate across the listening platforms, which will turn into more people willing to come on and share their encounters. If you've been listening for years, I'd ask that you please do the same. Home base for Into the Fray is intothefrayradio.com. There you will find all episodes, blog posts, and get bonus content info. Speaking of that bonus content, on top of the free weekly show, I also produce bonus content for Patreon and Apple Podcasts Premium. On either platform, you get all bonus audio episodes and early releases, each one ad-free, of course. Full disclosure, though, Patreon has a bit more in the way of perks because of their interface. Over there, you will get video versions of patron-only chats, the private Discord channel, and merch at certain pledge levels. So head to patreon.com slash into the fray or your Apple Podcatcher app to sign up for bonus content today. You can find me on the big three social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Linktree link in each of my bios will take you to all the places you want to venture regarding ITF, including small town monsters documentaries, various ways to listen to the show, beyond the fray books, contact info for me, and more. And lastly, and really honestly, most importantly, if you'd like to share your encounter or encounters on Into the Fray, the best way to get in touch is by emailing me at shannon at intothefrayradio.com. And without further ado, Let's get to the interview. So on this edition of Into the Fray, I welcome Gene on with me. He reached out and said he has been observing not only Bigfoot, but also Dogman for around eight years, right, Gene? And you say that they both live around this location because you have, in fact, seen them at different times of the year. Now, as I said in the in the beginning before we really started, it's up to you how detailed you want to be with the location. So, it, you know, whatever Gene says on this, guys, please don't reach out and go, well, what are the cross streets or what is the city or, you know, whatever Gene is going to share, that's what I'll share too. That's as far as that goes. So, I mean, I say that because especially considering... It went on for so long, and maybe it's still going on. I don't know. We're going to find out. But I, I want to make sure that things are protected as far as random visitors to properties. So, Gene, I know that you're in New York State right now. Is that the place that we are going to be discussing as far as where this activity happened? Yes, it is. All right. So in regards to kind of a starting point, I suppose we should go in succession as much as we possibly can. There will be some jumping around, of course, especially in regards to the way that I question people in interviews. But OK, so let's start with with where this was as much as you want to share of that. And then let's move into probably what are some of the things that you noticed first, unless the first thing was a Bigfoot waving at you and you knew it was a Bigfoot. I don't know the stories yet, which is wonderful. But yeah, let's start with a location first, Gene, as much of that as you want to give away. 
and since I've been doing it for quite a while, I, I feel comfortable saying that for now, it's just in New York. That is actually preferred. I think that's a good idea. So, all right. So we are in New York and, you know, how, how long had you been at this property? Is this property super rural? How close are neighbors? Just things like that. Um, the original property is uh, very rural. Uh, neighbors are very close. The second location is what I'm speaking more of today. It's it's about a half mile from town, and I'd say an eighth of a mile to houses. Okay, and how long had you been living there until you kind of noticed maybe something was a little off? Well, I don't live there. I live for, uh, I live probably seventeen miles away. But okay. uh, you want to hear the how I knew of this area? Absolutely. Okay, my oldest son has a friend who was in a play with my wife and he stayed overnight for a few nights. And when it was finished, she drove him home to this first location. And on the way, he he doesn't talk much, but on the way, my wife said, just for something to say, oh, you see that street there? I won't say the name of the street, but she said there were uh, Bigfoot sightings years ago, like in the 70s. And he turned to her and he said, you know, they're real. She said, well, what do you mean? And he told her this story about this place. I would say uh, this house he lives at. It was a rental house. And um, him and his little brother used to go out the back door across the, I call it a gas cut. It's a utility cut. It's probably 100 feet wide to a house that was abandoned past there. Now, beyond that was another abandoned house. So they used to go to the first abandoned house and they used to play basketball because the people moved out quickly and left the basketball hoop there. So they were playing basketball one day and after a while, the ball got away from the older child and rolled towards that second house that's abandoned. And he went and picked it up. And when he stood up, he saw something from behind a tree staring at him. And they immediately the kids ran home and the thing, they saw the thing run into the woods. Now I heard this story and I immediately called uh, this fellow's, uh, this kid's father who I know. And I said, can I come over and can I get the, uh, you know, measurements and everything? to see what he's talking about. And he said, sure. So I went over there and he showed me where it was. He showed me what tree was hiding behind. I measured where he was with the ball to where that thing was. And it was 40 feet. Now, the odd thing was the thing had to know the people in the house. The second house was abandoned because he was basically in her front yard. So he knew nobody was in that house. So that's why I originally heard of this area. And I went out and got trail cams and set them up there. And for six months or eight months, I got nothing. Well, I went on uh, Google Earth, I think it was. And I, I found the surrounding areas that I thought maybe this thing would go to. Maybe it wasn't around here anymore or there anymore. So I found this area uh, was probably, as a crow flies from the first area, it was probably a mile away. So I drove there one day, parked my car, and I walked probably a mile down the power lines to this location. And there was a trail going into the woods. I just took the trail. I, I had no idea where I was going. And something was telling me as I walked down these trails, because there were trails all over, it kept telling me, don't take that one, take this one. The trails that this, my thoughts were telling me. And I walked probably uh, three quarters of a mile in there. And this was in January. And I walked down this trail. 
and it has an Indian name to it. So it gives you an idea of, I'll speak about later, how to pick a spot to look on your own. And I walked down this trail and I found a footprint that I measured at 17 and a half inches. Now I had a professional tracker who I knew, look at him, and he said, Either Shaquille O'Neal is walking around up there barefoot in the winter, or you got yourself a Bigfoot. So from there on, I got trail cams, and, uh, you know, I started doing some observing up there. It started off with um, a lot of footprints. I thought maybe that the uh, track I found, or tracks I found, were of them leaving because it's wintertime. I, I I assume they migrated. But then I found abnormalities, I guess you'd say, on the trail cams of something standing in front of the trail cam and it whites it out when it's very close. But you could see the shape of it. And the shape was a big head, shoulders, no neck. So I said, well, maybe they're still there during the winter. So I've been going back and forth there for, I guess, eight, seven, eight years now. And it's progressed quite a bit since then. So, Gina, it's a little interesting that as far as the abandoned houses go, you said that it seemed like they moved out quite quickly. I wonder if that had anything to do with the activity around there. You know, it's a good thought. Maybe. It was. I mean, you and I might be excited to live in a place like that, but I would hazard to say not everybody would. Well, they were close neighbors, and I would think that, um, you know, at least not this family, but maybe the other people around them that they knew would have said something Mm -hmm. if that was the case. They didn't say anything. What about other – so you've got tracks and these – anomalous shapes on your trail cams what about any other sign and and that could be uh, pretty much anything that that you noticed that was out of place well i used to take um i take a lot of um pictures of odd things like uh branches weed between other trees uh things like that i just take pictures of them and you know i can always delete them later but i i do take pictures at the time This one particular time was two years later. I looked at the date. Two years later, I looked at some of these photos, and I found that something was stalking me. Um, And I didn't see him at the time, but I could see him clear in the picture. And since then, I've seen quite a few of them. So, Gene, in relation to this stalking, you would just take successions of of photos and there was maybe a, a dark mass in, in different locations as you were walking out or in, I should say. Back up a little bit because I'm getting a little fuzzy with time here. Um, on one of my trail cam videos, somebody that I heard of uh, wanted to see the footage because I, I said, this is what I get. I, I get trail cam f- videos, but I don't see anything, but I see a lot of like lights in the videos. And this is the daytime. So this woman says, can I look at them? So I sent them to her. And she pulled a still off one of my videos. She sent it back to me. And at first, I didn't see anything. So I went to bed. And that next morning, I woke up and I said, let me look at them again. I looked at them again. And I'll be darned. There wasn't a three sass, uh, I'm sorry, three dog men and a juvenile, or should I say an infant Sasquatch in the tree. Now, if it wasn't for her, I was very, getting very disappointed because it was a dull spot there for a while before I found out about the pictures and about them actually looking at the trail cam but staying far enough away where I couldn't see them. So, uh, so just to be clear, you you noticed that there were lights or orbs, whatever you want to term them, right, during the daytime. But then 
after this woman looked at them, you said that in one of or one or a few, you can correct which one that is, of the photos, there was three dog man and a juvenile in the same photo. Yes, a juvenile uh, Sasquatch, I should say. Yes. Wow. And, um, say lights. I I found out later on it was uh, eye shine. And I did. They were like. At first, I thought there were like marbles or reflectors in the trees. I said, there's so many of them. I don't know what that is. So I, I saved it before I, I found out about this person that could look at it for me. I saved the video for the longest time. And I then I sent it to this woman. And she's the one to pull the still off of it. And I got renewed because I actually saw them. I knew they were there. And this eye shine, though, was occurring during the, the daytime? Yes. So then no, no, they're, in the tr- they're in the trees in the dark. So when the sun moves throughout the trees, you can mm-hmm. see the eyes light up and then, dis- then disappear. So the three dog men are on the on ground level. And then so is the juvenile or are, is this all? I'm just trying to piece together if this is just one shot or, you know, succession of shots where maybe they're moving are they all up in the trees or are, are the dogmen on the ground? This is one video and they're all in the trees and they're not moving. Well, it's a still, so they're not moving. Right. And she, and she didn't see the other dogmen or Sasquatch when she sent it to me. I found those later on. I mean, knowing what we know, which isn't much about Bigfoot and even less on dogman. Did that surprise you to see both of these quote unquote, quote unquote species hanging out that closely together? Yes, it's, it's, it still baffles me, but I don't know if there's some from the same family or different clans that have lived or learned to live together. I don't know. So, but at that point, you had found what could easily be termed, as far as we know, as Bigfoot tracks. Had you found a more canid track anywhere before seeing this? These guys hanging out in this uh, trail cam still. Well, as far as I know, that the uh, the Bigfoot, um, sc- sorry, the dogmen have regular tracks or leave regular tracks like Sasquatch would. I never found a large canine track. That kind of goes to the the plot thickening, doesn't it? I mean, yes. yes. So, what do you what do you personally make of that then? That their tracks would, according to you, I mean, there's three dogman and a juvenile Sasquatch. Although at one point you found this massive track that was obviously a Bigfoot, right? As far as we can tell. What do you make of that then? That there are no canid tracks around this particular area the reason why i'm saying that is because i had a had a uh, personal sighting of dog men and i saw them walk and they didn't have canine feet they had regular feet like we have did they have the uh quote-unquote backwards dog leg look no no and they have and the bottoms of their feet are light colored. The rest of them were solid black. Would you be willing to share that uh, sighting or encounter with us? Yeah. Um, the first location to the second site, I used to take the pretty much the same trail all the time. And there's one particular time I took the trail through uh, where I usually go and there are different sections. You could go through this one section and then cross the power cut and go into another section. What I think happened was the centuries, I call them, saw me leave their, their section. So they paid no more, uh, any more never mind to me. You know, they thought I was gone. I circled back and I walked up a little knoll to the right and I sat down and I just watched I don't know how long I sat there not that long maybe 
half an hour. And split second, I saw that this black dog man walking down the trail who made no noise. And it looked like he was riding a bicycle. It was so smooth. But I did see the bottom of his feet. And that's how I know that. How tall do you think he was? Well, I'm guessing I was probably um, 75 yards away. I'm saying, I'm guessing six foot, maybe. Was the motion smooth in a way that it was almost, and I'm not trying to fish for this at all. I'm just trying to quantify it in my mind because we've also heard that about Bigfoot, that they just can move very, they're just built for that terrain, right? So do you think it was smooth in a way that it was almost paranormal? And not that I'm saying that automatically, I'm not trying to stamp at that. I'm just saying, was it, was there any abnormal motion about that? Or you were just witnessing something that's just very adept in, in that terrain? first saw it, I thought it was a, uh, in fact, I told my wife, I said, I saw this hiker walk down the trail and it was so fast that I couldn't even, I didn't even think about picking up my camera, but it was so smooth. I just envisioned somebody on a bicycle riding down a road that had no bumps in it, just, just glided down the trail. And there was foliage in the way, but there was one point where I saw its foot come up. And that's how I say they had regular feet and they had light colored soles. If you had to compare it size wise to something that everybody would know and you could place it down there, what, what do you think that would be? Well, to say from that distance, but it, I would say it's still a juvenile. It wasn't overly muscular. I don't know what more I can say about that. Pretty much is built the way, that, you know, a, a, a kid in high school would be that bulkiness, but covered in hair, head to toe. And the head, uh, just, can you describe that? Was it, uh, you know, this classic Anubis looking type of a head? Uh, hair pitch black. Um, the hair on the, I'd say, neck or cheeks kind of stick out almost like a hairy dog. You know, you have tufts of hair coming out the side. That's what I noticed about it. Were you frightened when you saw it? No. Well, excited, but not frightened. So you see this this dog, man. And then I would imagine this kind of ignites things for you and really takes things to another level, right, as far as your, your research goes. Because now it seems like you were pretty passionate already about it at that point. Been up there so much, including all night by myself. I figured, why be afraid? They would, If they wanted to do something to me, they would have done it a long time ago. But I did the second day. I went back to the same spot the second day, and I saw it again. Now, I don't know if it was the same one or a different one, but it looked exactly the same, and it was a split-second sighting. And there's a little footbridge, and I saw the thing run over the footbridge. And it was odd because there were hikers probably two minutes before that went over the bridge. So I thought that it was hiding, and then it ran across the bridge to see where they went. Mm, So it was running in the direction of the hikers. Yes. That's kind of creepy. But maybe they're just... You know, like sentries, like you said, there's just certain ones that are there to look out and see where the uh, the mostly hairless things are going, right? So when it ran across the footbridge, did it run by bipedally or was it on all fours? Bipedal. Bipedal, okay. Yeah. I've, I've never seen one on all fours. So what was the next thing then after that sighting? Well, I, I remember going up there one day. It was... Um, I know it was pouring rain when I left, but um, I went up there to get the card out of my trail cam. Now, the trail cam had been there so long that I put it in a different, I put it up there in a different season. So I, when I went up there, it started raining, and I mean monsoon raining. And I'm looking for the trail cam. I'm, I'm walking up this main trail and I'm cutting into the area where my trail cam was, could not find it. So I did this, I came out and repeated myself five different times. Finally, I said, I was getting soaked. I said, 
I, I give up. I'll come back another day. I walked back out to the main trail and started leaving. And it wasn't 100 feet down the trail. I found a freshly killed mole on one of the only rocks in the, in the roadway. Um, I, I call it a fire road. And it was a freshly killed mole soaking wet with a leaf underneath it like a garnish. And I took that as a gift because it wasn't there when I walked up on the trail five times. Now, that makes you wonder, would that be Bigfoot or would that be the dogman? Like in your mind, is this particular area more active with the dogman? Since at that point you had seen them essentially in the very same spot twice. This is a slightly different section than that, but um, I see mostly dogmen. And I say mostly because I've seen a lot. Do you think it's possible that that then maybe it's all dogmen? I mean, with them leaving the same tracks, maybe the boy was he? Well, basically, I'm asking. I well, he's not on, and we don't know. But I'm just wondering if it was just a. Um, misidentification of a dog man when he said it was a Bigfoot. I don't know. I don't think so because they would have said something about a snoot. It had no snout on it at all. Okay. So, and I, I, my thinking is they're from the same family. And I think that the adults, their job of the female adults is to breed as many young ones as they can. Um, So I think maybe it's a, I don't know what the word is for, but maybe it's like almost like a retarded child. Maybe they breed so much or maybe the breeding goes on during uh, within the family. And that's how you get the dog men. I don't know, but they seem to be, they seem to get along too well. Yeah. It does make you wonder because you, I mean, we've all heard before about them possibly being in the same area and what does that look like and did they fight? You know, is there cage matches and they fight to the death and things? But, I mean, your theory is just as plausible as any other. I, my um, experience has been that, they, that they're benign. They just want to be left alone, but they're very curious. And I think somebody said this before, and it's true, is that we are their TV. They hide in their spots during a day and they watch who walks or rides a bike up and down the trail. And that's how they get their excitement. So what was the next thing then uh, after that? Well, uh, that I can think of is um, I walked off the uh, power lines into the woods again. And something told me that day, I get these thoughts uh, throughout my life occasionally Something told me to bring my thermal during a day. So I brought my thermal and I walked into the woods and it was a little dark in there, obviously, because of the canopy. But I scanned around. I walked in about 100 feet. I scanned around and to my right, up in the tree, there was a a tree about 30 feet high. It had like a U at the top, two different branches. So it had a a crotch in the middle. There was something in that crotch. And it lit up like a Christmas tree. And I watched this thing and I tried to get my, it was comical. I was trying to get my monocular hooked up to my cell phone to try to zoom in to see what this was, which I got a picture of. It's not perfectly clear, but it's, it can show you that it's not a bear and it's not a raccoon, but there was a juvenile in the tree as a century. And he got busted. And I could, as I walked around the tree, I could almost feel the fear he had of me. He knew I spotted him. And he kept his head down so I couldn't see his eyes or his face. So then you couldn't tell whether that was a Bigfoot or a dogman? I couldn't. Well, I could tell by the shape of the head, I thought. The shape of the head said um, Sasquatch. I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, it would seem with the physiology, although you you're saying that the dogman that that you saw didn't have those backwards legs 
the physiology of a Sasquatch seems a little bit more, it would lend itself to being able to climb trees, you know? You're correct. But, you know, I got to say, that being said, I do have photos of many juveniles, dogmen, in trees. I've always said this, the idea of, and, you know, I get it, if, if, if Sasquatch somehow is related to an ape or Gigantopithecus or all these other things, I get it. They would probably climb trees, but I've always said there's just something really creepy about them being up in the trees and they're watching. And But the dog man especially being up in a tree seems a little bit creepy to me, even more so than the Sasquatch. It's funny. I've got a photo of a juvenile um, dog man, dog man in the tree. And the way you see was like uh, from his upper chest up, just looking at me. And I took it off my cell phone. So it's not, again, it's not crystal clear, but it's clear enough to see that it's, it's not uh, some kind of bird. It'd be a screwed up bird, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. So I will get everyone would yell at me if I didn't at least ask. And this is, again, this is no pressure on you, but I have to at least ask out loud. That way people aren't emailing me a hundred times going, well, is there anywhere to see these pictures? You know, did have do you share these pictures? And it's, it's no slight on you if you don't, but it, I have to ask that. What I said was stories are just stories without pictures. So I can absolutely send you some pictures. No, would these be pictures just for me or pictures that I would be able to share? You can share them. Fantastic. No, oh, that's great, Gene. Thank you so much. That has to be asked because the second anybody brings up a picture or video, that would, the audience is yelling, you know, from far away to, to ask about that. So wonderful. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. So just, just let me, let me just say yeah. that, um, you got to remember, the audience has to remember, these things aren't out there posing for you. So you might see a picture of something hiding behind it, uh, branches or behind leaves. They're always trying to hide. But I've got some where they did a whoopsie-daisy, you know, and I got some shots. Long ago, and I don't even remember where I heard it from, but when I was still living in Ohio... I heard at some point on a podcast or whatever it was, you know, as you're walking, take pictures behind you, but don't look, you just take the snaps behind you because, you know, the thought was that there's always something, as you say, where they're television, they're, they're entertainment. So take the photos behind you and just see what might be peeking its head out or, you know, whatever, watching you as you're walking away. I mean, most of these photos, you, you call it a whoops, a daisy and that, probably is I would assume a lot of times what happens I mean that's what happens in a lot of the ghost photos right have you found that you've gotten more you know evidence afterward from the whoops of daisies or you're just taking a picture of a and then b being dogman or sasquatch in fact was in the photo or you had actually laid eyes on something strange and then were then able to capture it in a photo or a video, whichever one. Well, I, like I said, I've had four in-person sightings, but the other ones that I'm going to send you, or most of them I'm going to send you, of the dogmen and trees, for example, um, on the day I did not see them. They're so well camouflaged. Uh, but when I look at the pictures later on, I can absolutely see them. Um, and the reason why I started doing that was because, like I said, I, I looked at some old photos. And in one particular one, I took a picture of what looked like a grave. So I took a picture of that because I take a picture of everything. And I looked at it later on. I said, I'll be darned. In the background, to the right, in a hollowed out tree, I zoomed in and looked like a coyote was in the tree. I mean, inside the, t the tree. And I said, that's odd. It's coyotes, usually, you know, they'll run from you and they won't hide there. So I started looking at the other pictures. And this one other particular one, um, like 
I told you before, I take a picture of a branch that was waved in between two trees. That's when I saw the, the Sasquatch laying on the ground at the extreme left of the frame watching me. Now, Gene, this grave that you mentioned, what's the length of this thing? And was it actually a mound of dirt to look like a classic grave? And that's why it stood out to you? I find a lot of them, uh, different sizes. Um, the largest one was probably nine feet or more long. I did go up there and I took a shovel I bought, a military shovel for weight. And I dug, and I don't know if it was built afterwards, but it was an, I concluded that it was an ant mound. They could have built it, the ant mound, on top of something that was freshly dug. I don't know. But this is a, um, this was a park. I wasn't about to dig, you know, a four or five foot (laughs) deep hole. So I couldn't tell you for sure. But that was the only one that you had found that you tried to to dig up? That's the only one that I tried to dig up, but I I found probably maybe eight of them. So then, I mean, this might couple with the theory that they bury their dead, right? Okay. You know, I thought that originally, but I'll tell you another story of another photo I took. And at, on the day again, I didn't see anything. But later on, I'm looking at the photo, and it's like a stream running near it. And in the background, there's like a little bit of a, not a cave, but the lack of other description, I'd say a, a cave. And... There was something in the picture. It looked like it was laying on the ground. And to me, it looked like, after examining it for quite a while, it looked like something dead laying on the ground, stretched out, and all the color was out of its face. You could see two hands, or two white things, rather, on either side of it. One was on top of the body, I think it was, and the other one was on the ground. But it was all white. And I can't figure out to this day, not been able to find a location or figure out what it could have been. But possibly when one of them dies, maybe they put them in a secluded area to see if they're really dead. I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting one, huh? Yeah, I I wish I could find that spot because... uh, I said, you know what, I'm not going to be able to carry out a body, but I'll snip off a finger if I have to. Well, that's what they say. Just take take what you can, enough to to get it proven, right? Yeah, yeah, because I I would not ever hurt a a living one. No, I'm with you on that. I mean, I, I do think that we need a body or at least a decent portion of a body to prove them, but honestly, I don't know how much it's going to be a good thing for them to have them proven anyway. So it it might sound kooky to your audience, but I'm telling you that I'm almost 72 years old. And I'm a retired from the entertainment business. As you know, I don't make up stories. I try to come up with a logical explanation of what I see. I don't know. I, I, I found quite a few times, probably five times I've found in my photos of deer carcasses in the trees. And I'm thinking the only thing that I know of that can do that is a big cat or a Sasquatch. And they say big cats aren't around here, but I know that to be false. But I'm thinking the Sasquatch actually hang the deer in the trees. Now, I don't know once they're eaten and they're done with it, they bury it, what they do with that carcass, I don't know. But I find it interesting that they hang them in the trees. Now, how about these other sightings, Gene? Would you share those with us as well? And which ones did I tell you about now? I told you about the uh, one in the tree and the mm-hmm. other two. Oh, the, the, yeah, the adult. Um, that was recently, too. I was walking on a trail, 
and had a had a I was in a section where there was uh, an S turn, if you know what I mean, in the trail. Um, so I'm walking down the trail, and through the S turn, I could see somebody coming the other way, and almost at the exact same time, we saw each other, and I only saw from, I'd say the, the ear up, but I could see that it saw me. It was black and gray and had shaggy hair, and it immediately ducked down and spun around. And I immediately went over to the site. It took me probably, you know, 15 seconds to get there. Nothing. I looked all over, could not find any trace of anything. I've, I talked to a, a volunteer who comes in and works on the trails occasionally. He showed up probably 15 minutes later on his bicycle uh, from the direction where this thing turned around toward. And I asked him what he had seen. He said, I have seen nobody since the parking lot, which was at least a half a mile away. So nobody had been on that trail. Uh, my explanation is that was a adult Sasquatch. Uh, how far up was the year? That might be kind of a hard, hard to uh, say measurement, but can you guess on height? His, his height? He was taller than me. I'm five nine. So I, I say, oh, he was over six feet, conservatively. And he saw you as well. You said, "Oh, we saw each other at the same time." And he, he it's almost like he, I, I heard a mental whoops, and he turned around and tried to get away from me. Listen, the the um, the continuation of that story is I was there not too long ago. I have a trail camp set up off that trail and it's maybe 35 feet off of the trail. And I was down there. This is probably three weeks ago, two weeks ago. And I tra I changed my, um, my card. I heard a couple of noises and I could see the trail from where I was, but I was behind a tree and I saw a couple of bicycle guys go by. I said, okay. Is, you know, they look at where they're going. They don't look around. So I'm OK because I've had trail cams stolen up there. It was probably. Five minutes after that, I got done and I walked up to the trail. I made a left. And I walked maybe 50 feet and in the middle of the trail, the no vegetation worn down from bicycles was an X with freshly broken sticks. And I, look, I stood at that and I looked at it and said, I looked around thinking, is somebody trying to tell me something? And I took my foot and I moved the X and made it across and left. So I don't know whether they're telling me don't put my trail cam there or what that X meant, but I think it was the same person or same thing. And what was your thinking as far as taking the X and making it across just to try to communicate back with them? Yes. Yep. That that mole incident. What what year was that? I have to look on my pictures, but I'd say maybe 2017. And nothing like that ever happened again. Uh, not food wise, no. So that mole. Um, I mean, I know it's also raining, but did it? Could you tell how it had died? You know, skull crushed, anything like that? Not to be morbid, but my mind just went back to the mole for some reason. I couldn't tell how it was killed, but it was killed fresh. It was recent. Now, these other gifts that you say that you've been left, what kinds of things? And, and what were the circumstances? Well, not really gifts. The other ones were I put out, I put out gifts, or I put out sticks and I lay them out on, on a log maybe with food sometimes, but I'll lay them out a certain way and take pictures of them. And then I'll go back next time I'm there and go to the spot and the food will be gone, but the sticks will be moved in a different pattern. So that still continues to this day. What about when you're out on these trails or these service roads, do you ever hear 
them trying to communicate back and forth with each other from different parts of the of the bush? The only thing I've heard, and I mentioned it to my wife before, is that I'll be up there and I know there's nobody up there, or I'm pretty sure nobody's up there because nobody's in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. But I'll hear faint conversations and I can't really make out words, but I can hear mumbling of words. And it's happened quite often. I can't tell really where they're coming from. It's happened, though, four or five times. So to you, kind of more the quote-unquote samurai chatter, except you didn't actually hear maybe the samurai part where people report very distinctive, almost like some like a, like a deaf person talking, right? So, But to you, it was just more mumbling. You couldn't quite make out something that specific. You know, I've heard guys on bicycles go by on different trails and they were yelling to each other. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like that, but it was it was not as loud. It felt like or sounded like maybe two or two people or two things were walking down the trail and they were talking at a regular level. And one of the trails happened to be close enough where I could hear. I can hear what they're saying, obviously, but I could hear the noise. And I don't think it was hikers because I didn't make out any of the words. So besides, for instance, moving the X into a cross, do you go out there and do whoops or knock on trees or anything like that? Do you do you implement any tactics, basically? I don't do any of those things. I, I think it's pretty comical to do, to do that. I mean, I, I have um, walked down the trail. And I was going to turn onto that footbridge I told you about. This was a different time. And right before I got to the footbridge, I got five distinctive knocks, like coming from not far away from me. And I looked up in the trees, could not find where it was coming from. But I crossed the bridge because I, I knew it was a warning to somebody. I crossed the bridge and I ran because the, the, the uh, trail zigzags up this, not mountain, but hill. And so what I did was I ran straight up, up the hill to try to find out what the warning was for. And I saw nothing. And is this a really popular outdoor spot for hiking and biking and things like that? Uh, Biking, yes. Um, Hiking, not so much. But probably. When people people see me up there, they think that um, bird watching. Because you're not on a bike, so kind of like what else is there to do, sort of a thing. Yeah, I'm carrying around. I'm yeah. carrying around cameras and <laughs> yeah. stuff. And, yeah. If they only knew, right? May, they might not bike there. Uh, so, well, I'm, in, in, I'm in, not going to tell you either. Well, well, yeah, yeah, no kidding. Don't need to look and just let them go about their happy, happy business. Um, so I imagine in nicer weather, it's probably a semi busy place. It depends on the day. I was up there yesterday. There was uh, one guy walking his dog. That was it. And that was a nice day. So you never know. And how close to uh, businesses or houses is this particular location? I'd say an eighth of a mile to houses, but probably they're probably closer to that than that. That's why you never really hear any whoops or anything. Maybe if you lived up there, maybe you'd hear something once in a while, but that I'm assuming that's why I never hear whoops or loud stuff up there because of that. But in some of these areas that you're mentioning, there are essentially, well, like you said, you, you hazard call it a cave, but it was kind of a cave. I, I, I get that. I've seen places like that. You're like, well, it's not a cave, but it's not a cave. So there are quite a bit of areas like that where there would be a lot of places to hide. There's a lot of places to hide, yes. Yeah, yeah. Is yes. this a kind of place where there is a lot of ground brush, like heavy ground brush with thorny stuff, all that? Oh, you mean that's hard to get through? Or yeah. That type of thing? No, I mean, I- I'm off trail all the time. You know, this big sign saying stay on the trails because – Rattlesnakes have been sighted. I've mm. never seen a rattlesnake there. So, but I, I walk off trail and 
I there's branches and low growing foliage, but it doesn't stop you from going through. Okay. Yeah. I was just imagining, I'm like, I wonder if Gene has to take a machete out there to, to clear a path, right? Because there are, no, there are places like that. So, okay. So what, what about, have you seen online or heard anybody talking about sightings in that particular, in these areas, you know, whether it be Bigfoot or Dogman or both? No, except for the um, the kid that told me. Now, up until then, I always thought that Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Dogman, whatever you want to call them, were on the West Coast. I didn't think anything was around here. But I was uh, educated on that one. And to you, these are both benign creatures, beings, whatever we want to call them. And you've never had a bad feeling prior to your dogman sightings or during your dogman sightings? Never. Never. I'm more afraid of bears up there. I mean, that's good to hear, right? Because I know that you're quite familiar with these subjects and we just hear a lot about dogman just being big old jerks. And even before someone actually physically lays eyes on one or more than one, they have a really, really horrible gut feeling that something bad is about to happen. So it's nice to hear somebody say that that's not the, that's not my case. No, no. And you, know, you reminded me when you said that, that the only thing I've ever smelled up there was that first location by that kid's old house. Um, I was going to move my trail cam one time and I took it to a different location looking for a suitable spot. And I got to the base of a tree and I got, I wouldn't say overpowering, but very, very strong smell of body odor. So strong that I'm smelling myself to see it's coming from me. And it wasn't. So something was there recently, like minutes before I got there. And I checked all the trees. I couldn't see anything. But that's the only thing I've ever smelled up there. And if this is going to give away the location, or or maybe you could just be really vague on this part, but uh, as far as obviously they would need a, a pretty good water source, and I'm sure that the state of New York would have a lot of water sources, but I'm just curious, is it more of lakes and rivers or, you know, kind of swampy areas? What What's the water source around there for these guys? Well, there are two lakes that I know of. There are massive streams that run through this property. Like I say, the food source is plentiful. So I don't know what else. I think that if they have that, they, they're they there all year round. Snowfall, though. Quite a bit of snowfall, obviously, right? Yeah. But it doesn't seem to bother them. Nope. And I just this past um, snowfall, I've gotten a juvenile trackway that's quite impressive. It went for about 200 yards. This whole idea of no canid tracks when you're having sightings of Dogman, and and I'm going to piggyback off of your theory, which I find extremely interesting as far as, you know, the maybe it's they're inbred and no backwards legs. Do you think then that maybe in that particular area, that gene pool is then just heavier toward the Bigfoot side. I don't know. Do you know where I'm going with that? I don't, I don't know if I'm wording myself properly there. It would be heavier toward the dogman side. Well, no, I, I meant heavier toward the Bigfoot side because they don't even leave dogman tracks out there. Yes, and I... Well, let me tell you something else. Maybe this would help with the answer. I was taking pictures one day. And I call it a crossroads of the trails. And there's a guy on a bike came down the trail. And I, you know, I'm always friendly. I gave him a wave. And he stopped. And he goes, I just saw a coyote back there, you know, not far back on the trail. He goes, but then again, it was it was too small for a coyote. I think it was a wolf. And, you know, we talked a little more and he left. And I'm thinking, it probably wasn't a wolf. You know, in the daytime. I find it hard to believe. So I don't think they have 
the ones I see anyhow don't have the backward legs. Yeah, it's just so strange not to find any canid tracks. You know, when, when there's it's you can find them, but they're small. Yeah. And I notice people up there running with dogs, so I'm assuming they're from them. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I find too, yeah, I find too many, you know, Sasquatch tracks to to think of any, anything else. Yeah, that's just a really interesting aspect to all of this. What else comes to mind? Maybe I should tell you. There's uh, the power line I told you runs through this park, and I always thought, you know what? I've been all over the place, but I've not been to the end. This to the left, to the left of the line. So I said, I'm go- today I'm going down there. So I walked, I hiked and hiked and hiked. I finally got to the end. You know, it was probably, I don't know, two, three miles up and down hills. And so I finally get there and it just ends. And then you could see in a distance the road. And then beyond that, it continued up the mountain. I said, well, this is as far as I can go. And then I said, I better go back. And then I realized it's getting dark. And I said, how am I going to get back? Because under the canopy, it's like, it's almost black. And then I realized, oh, 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 yeah, I got my phone. So I turned my phone on. I walked out of the place. Probably took me 45 minutes. I got back to my car. I put everything back in a trunk. And then I get the I get ready to get in the car and I look at the trail I just came out of and I see a light. And the only way I can describe it, it was like a light flashlight, like a flashlight, either cheap or batteries going dead. So it wasn't super bright, but it was bouncing around. Like I couldn't see what was holding the light, but I could see it was bouncing around like something was holding it and was walking. And I'm thinking, what other idiot is here in the pitch black besides me? So I waited, and nothing came out. It, it got to like 30 feet to the end of the trail and just disappeared. And nobody ever came out of the trail. So I thought that was very odd. Well, that sounds very familiar. I have myself seen something very similar, as have, as you know, a lot of people. So then that leads into a question do you think that has anything at all to do with the cryptid phenomena that you are experiencing and seeing in that area? Or is that just something completely separate? I, I've heard this after that incident that if you see a lantern, lantern in the woods, it's going to be a Sasquatch is going to be there. And I'm looking at my wife going to a lantern, any kind of light, I guess they're talking about. So that's what that's why I relate it to. So you relate it in in the sense that a Bigfoot is about to to be seen, kind of a thing, like it's a precursor. Almost, yes, yes. I don't think they I, they can see very well in the dark, so I don't think they need lights. But I I don't know what else that light could have been. So then do you think that Bigfoot and Dogman are 100% flesh and blood? 100%. They're not interdimensional. They're not, they're, they don't disappear. Listen, when we can't explain things, we immediately, or a lot of people, immediately go to the supernatural. I think these things are human. And I think there's a good chance that we evolve from them because they're so smart. And I think they're just trying to keep their species alive. Now, Gene, do you always go up by yourself? Yes. Uh, 99% of the time. Now, that other 1%, when you went out, did you, was the activity any different, any less, any more? I have not, I've not gone with anybody since I figured out how to get them on film which is since last September. It's been all me since then. Because you feel like someone else out there will kind of screw things up? Uh, No, because most people look at me and they look at me like I'm an idiot. I have, I have one friend in particular. I I, I know he's not, he's not a believer, but he called me one day or one night. I was in the woods 
And he goes, where are you? I said, I'm in the woods. He goes, do you have a gun? I said, no, if they don't exist, why do I need a gun? What do you say to that? Yeah. I said, yeah, if he you said, don't well, believe, well, why would I need a gun? Right, bud? Well, he's said, well, maybe a bear or something. I said, okay. First of all, first of all, it's a park. There, there's no firearms allowed in a park. So, and also, I've been, I've been in that park. Uh, walked up the road very quietly at night, and walked by one of the lakes, and it sounded like um, maybe a 200-pound bear jumped into the lake. What the? This was like three o'clock in the morning. Like, what the heck was that? I see it. I get I shine all the time. So I come out of the woods. I see nothing. As I'm leaving, I look up on the hill. I see all the sets of eye shine watching me. And usually when I show up, I wave to them. Whether I see them or not, I let them think I do see them. I, even on a trail when I'm leaving, I wave to them. And they know that's the guy who sometimes leaves food. And he's he's benign to us. So I want to get them comfortable where they actually can show themselves. That was something I had written down to ask is, do you think they know you? So you do. Absolutely. They do know me. And I think they know who to trust or semi-trust and who not to, because not to, well, I, I was going to say something. I better not say that because it might give away the location, but yeah, I better not say that. Yeah, let's, it, yeah, don't. we'll, we'll leave that out. Well, what, so what are, what kinds of things have you left for them? Have you left them food? I leave them, whatever I have. Uh, sometimes I, I bring hot dogs. Sometimes I bring, I've tried salami. They really like salami. Uh, I've tried bacon. I've, I've left, um, not candy bars, but like, uh, health food bars that I have. Sometimes I'm in the woods and, or I leave an apple. Like the time I saw one in a tree, the next day I went back there, I climbed the tree and I got some hair samples and I left an apple in the crotch of that tree. So I try to leave with something for them so they know that's the guy who leaves gifts. What does that hair look like? You know what? I've been talking to um, Todd Disotel. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't seem too interested in examining it. I think he... He puts me in the uh, category of the kooks. So um, I, I, I think I picked up only three hairs. And I have them in plastic baggies still. So until the day comes where I can get them analyzed, uh, there they sit. What do they look like? They look um, grayish. Are they, are they really long? Um, they're about... Um, Say maybe inch and a half, maybe. Gene, how many times, if you could guess, do you think that you've been into that area? Uh, 50 and 100. Over, the, over that many years, that's a, I mean, that's a good amount of time to be going in there. So I could see where they, they would indeed recognize you. As you say, they seem to be very smart. They can tell who's who and what's what. I think that the um, when the day comes when they're proven they're real, it's going to be because of a mistake made by a juvenile, because they are super curious. I always wondered that, you know, and especially again piggybacking off of your theory that there's you know inbreeding going on. I'm always going, why isn't there just one? goofy little dude that just screws it up and you know he gets hit by a truck or he wanders off into the wrong place and he gets caught somehow uh, how has that never happened something has happened but not not the location i am at because it's there's no real they'd have to go downtown to get to a main road so there are there are roads but they're very sporadically traveled that's just so I just keep my mind just keeps tripping on that no canid tracks for all the dog man sightings and the pics and everything. My mind is just trying to quantify that. It's just so strange. Mm -hmm. Well, strange to me too, but like I said, I've not find, found big canine tracks. So 
I think after all the time I spent up there, I would have found some by now. Yeah. Occasionally I'll find a three toed track or a diversion track, but not, not very often. The old three toed track. Where have you found the three toed tracks? The day I found the first time I went there and I found that 17 and a half inch footprint, I went home and told my wife, she goes, can I go up there too? I said, yeah. So I took her up there, parked the car, because I didn't know you could access this, this area from a different end. So we parked the car. We had to walk all the way down power lines. We didn't go 100 feet from the car. And she goes, she hits me. She goes, what's that? It was a three-toed, I'd say, I didn't measure like an idiot, but I'd say it was probably, again, 17 inches. But he saw it. No, does she want to see one of these things? What does she think about all this? I asked her today. I said, really, what, do you think I'm nuts or are you a believer or what? She goes, no, I'm a believer. I just don't see some of the stuff in the photos that you see. Mm. And I said, I said, that's, that's fair. Because when I first got that trail cam still, I didn't see anything either. And since then I've outlined the whole thing. So you can see it better. But now I know what to look for. So she doesn't know what to look for because she hasn't seen it as many times as I have. Now that woman that sent you back the the photo where you're seeing the three dogmen and then the juvenile Sasquatch, is, is she, and I'm not looking for a name or anything, I'm just wondering, you know, is she into this subject? Like, is she a researcher? Is this kind of a passion of hers as well? Let's just say she's, as far as I know, she's an armchair researcher. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering and, on that. Let's just, just to clarify, I, I don't consider myself a researcher. I consider myself an observer. Well, that's fair. But you do you do get out there a whole lot more than a lot of other people, which is nice. And it seems like that area is extremely close to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty handy. I've actually found footprints. My wife and I, the same together, we found footprints a mile from our house. Were those more juvenile size or were they the full grown uh, daddy type? No, they were daddy type. Mm. Also, I've seen, I walk my dogs in the same location every day. I try to go every day. In the same spot, they have to urinate in the same spots. And I'm waiting for him to urinate one day. It was like early spring and the foliage was not out yet. And I looked through the trees and I was thinking, it was like houses two, do two doors down that had a Great Dane. And they used to let him run free. And I, you know, I had to tell him a few times, keep your dog tied up because, first of all, my dog is going to have a fight with him. And number two, he's going to get hit by a car. So I looked through the trees and I said, he's got his dog out again. I said, darn, that dog's going to get hit by a car. And I'm looking at it, that's not the same color. So right then I heard a car coming toward me, and there's no sidewalks. So I, I looked toward the car to make sure I was off the road enough to not get hit. And as I looked back, this thing had made a beeline for the woods. And from the side I saw, it was a panther. Yeah, the, the panthers that don't exist in New York, right? Right. That's what they said. Yeah, because yeah. there'll be a panic. He said there was. And you know what? My daughter's friend who lives, a, or she lives a mile or half a mile from me. She went over to visit her and her father, the girl's father, bought the house across the street and decided to fix it up to rent it. And he had like this, like a, I call it the bill code doors, you know, for the basement from the outside. Mm -hmm. He had those doors open. He says he came around the corner to go to the back of the house, he said, and a panther came out of his basement. Oh, my God. And I said, I am glad somebody else saw him. I look, people look at me like I'm an idiot. Oh, that gave me chills. Yeah, can you imagine uh, going down into the basement and, and cornering that and it, it getting frightened and what might happen? You can't imagine what would happen. I hate to think about it. Oh. 
That's... I think they have a hundred mile radius. So I've been thinking maybe I should put my trail, one of my trail camps up over to, on this guy's property, see if I can get him on film. Yeah, that'd be a cool snap. And then, of course, they come up with some cockamamie story that, oh, that we know that wasn't taken here. Those don't exist here. Like, uh uh-huh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny. I have a a photo taken up in the woods that I didn't see at the time, of course, because it was quite a ways away. And I have one of these cameras that can zoom 100 times. So it blurs out a little bit when you zoom 100 times. But I was looking at the photo, and I said, what is that dark thing? And then I, I zoomed in a little bit more and I thought, oh, damn, it looked just like a black panther, but it was climbing a tree. And I looked around and I saw dogman hiding near it. So it, I don't think it was any panther again because the panther would not get along with the dogman. So I think that this black thing was another dogman, but it looked just like a panther. Is there any problem around there with people losing their pets and such? Uh, not that I know of, but I've mentioned it to a few of the neighbors. I said, keep, you have cats or little dogs, you better keep, keep them on a leash. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, that's creepy, though. You thought, oh, this dude's got his Great Dane out loose again and wasn't the Great Dane. Exactly the size, too. God, holy smokes. So the light phenomena, that's really the only time that you've seen... Besides the eye shine, a separate the orb situation was only that one time? No, no, it wasn't the only time, no. It's happened before, but I realized that every time, but this one other time I'll tell you about. I had my trail camp probably 15 feet up in a tree, and I kept getting, like, orbs in front of it. I'm like, what the heck is that? And then I finally figured out that it was a cobweb with moisture on it. Mm -hmm. It looked like an orb. But I've got this other video of this, for lack of a better description, an orb. And you could see it flying around, but you know, laugh, but it looks like it's treading water. You could see little feet treading water through the air. And I've actually somebody looked at it and said, Oh, that's just a uh, that's just a spider on its web. Right. I said it's it's traveled, it traveled from one tree ten feet over to another tree and circled the tree. That's not it's not a web. So yeah, I've if that if you want to call that an orb, I've gotten those too. Yeah, spiders either just by themselves or especially spinning webs or floating around on a web looks extremely strange uh especially on mm-hmm. ir that, that does get tricky right when you're looking at it so that's when you really have to put on your skeptical glasses and go hey what what else could this be so yeah thank you for bringing that up by the way so so gene i know that so far you haven't had any negative experiences with these things even the dog man types but have you thought about you know you're out there alone you don't go armed is there a, an experience that you wouldn't want to have are you nervous that you would have one of these terrifying negative experiences that we've all heard on other shows and mine are you is there some part of your mind that's kind of going well maybe I'm kind of playing with fire here well, I see I'm not afraid but a couple of photos I have I can see a very large Sasquatch, and then another photo, a very large dogman uh, standing by a tree, and I guesstimated it would be nine feet tall. Now, if I saw that thing in the dark, or in the daytime even, I think I would be a little nervous. Yeah. But to see the little ones, I've had dogs my whole life. When I see the ones, the juveniles during a day, that's what I think of them as, as dog, pet dogs. What's the closest that you think that you've been to a juvenile, whether you knew it or not, whether you figured it out later, you know, looking at a photo or something, do you have any estimation on that? How close you may have gotten at the closest point to one of the juveniles? Yeah, I actually measured it 30 feet. I mean, that's pretty cool to, 
And this probably goes along with what we were talking about earlier, that they seem to know you because, boy, I mean, you hear the other stories and a lot of it has to do with don't go where they, like, don't walk into their living room and don't screw with their kids. I mean, just like human beings, right? Don't screw with the kids. The yeah. fact that you can get that close, right? And they, essentially, they allow you to. You know that they're watching you the entire time, especially if there's a kiddo that close. That's saying a lot. Well, the particular time, it was the, it was the time when I caught that one in, in a tree. Now. I don't think by choice it would let me get within 30 feet. It just, I caught him. He, he had nowhere to go, you know, and I walked around the base of that tree and I've since then measured it. It was less than 30 feet, but I said 30 feet. Like I said, the thing was, I could smell the fear that was coming off him because he was busted and he knew it. The only thing that saved him was it turned the night really quick, especially under the canopy and I figured I can't get a sh- or much of a shot now anyhow. And he's not coming down out of the tree. So I left. But now I'm rethinking that, like, maybe I shouldn't have left. If you don't get these scenarios in your head ahead of time, you're going to react the wrong way, probably. I mean, you got to figure that I would hazard to say, at least, I don't know for sure. And I know that you won't either. But I hazard to say that there was likely an adult, male or female, Somewhere pretty close, keeping an eye. Because as you say, it seems like if any if any one of these things is going to screw it up for the entire species, you said it would be the juveniles. So yeah. I would ha- just hazard to say that <laughs> the adults are probably, they have their hands full, probably keeping an eye on those little buggers. Well, I think that they have a hard time getting around during the daytime because they're so big. But I do see them occasionally on film. And I think that either a juvenile told them, like, you should see this, or they're just checking on some of them. I don't know, but uh, I do see them occasionally. So do you try to implement plans before you you go there? Like, do you go, you know, every week and go, okay, now I'm going to leave a sweet item. And then the next week you're like, I'm going to leave a savory item, or I'm going to, give them this like do you do you kind of go out with a plan or you're you're just kind of going out there to to see what happens if i bring something they don't like it the fact that that they see me leave a gift for them i think that relays the same message that's true Um, and every time i just go out there i have i listen to that thought my head tells me where to go and sometimes it pays off sometimes i mean as many times or many months where i said I don't think they're up here anymore. I, I, I think they just pass through and because I get nothing. And then I finally figured out how to get them on film. And it's worked every single time since September. Are you hoping to someday see one in person quite close? Is that the end goal? You know, I got to laugh because it's one of the signs of this park says, stay on the trail. And I'm thinking, did they say that on purpose so I don't step on one of these things? Because I've seen them, the really tiny ones. If they're not in a hollowed out tree, they're in the under the leaves, just laying in the field. I mean, if I walk off trail, I could step right on one. So, yeah, I can see one up close, but I don't want to step on them. Or maybe not the, as you say, the nine foot tall one. That might change your mind a little bit, right? I'm trying to come across a, with a scenario in my head how I'm going to react if that happens or when it happens because I got to react the right way. And and to you, what would the right way be? The, rea- the right way is show respect but not fear, and try to interact with them. And. Interact. What What do you think you would do to interact? At, you're essentially face to face with either Bigfoot or Dogman. Well, I have to make sure my my camera, my GoPro is going. Uh, I interact with offering them food. So that's kind of a scenario where you thought of actually you're handing them 
something of a gift finally, instead of just leaving it and walking out? Well, I would offer them, I don't know if they take it out of my hand, but I, I put my hand out gently showing them that, that I am offering them something to show them that they have nothing to fear. Have you ever tried that though? Like if you, because you've said that you've looked off trail and seen the little ones, have you ever just thought, whoa, let me just like kind of plunk down right here or stand there, whatever, and, and do what you just said and just kind of hold your hand out and stand there to see what happened? I didn't say no. I recently have started just picking a spot and sitting, but my equipment has, it's not tuned in yet, let's say, and I've had trouble with it. So I've not been able to spend a lot of time doing that. What was the other part of that question? Oh, no, that was pretty much it. Just if you if you knew that there was one of these around, whether it be an adult or a juvenile, if you ever just thought of kind of just parking right there and doing what you said, just kind of opening your hand with, with this offering. Well, I haven't done that, but I don't expect them to come up to me and take it out of my hand. I mean, there's, there's fear involved. Yeah. And I, I think they're taught, since they're babies, to fear humans. As, I'm trying to change yeah. that. As they should, right? They're taught well. Because we're not that great sometimes. I fear humans. What was that, Gene? I stepped on you. I said, uh, I fear humans, so. <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah, we we really suck sometimes. Look what we do to each other. So they're they're rightfully scared. So, yeah, I was just wondering if that was, you know, part of this scenario was getting that close to something like that. But, boy, that would uh, that would be a humbling experience. I'm interested to um, to show you a couple of photos. One is I've I've showed it to a few people that it's a, it's just a scenery of woods. It's like what do you see in that picture? And they'll say trees. And I say zoom in and look around, and they don't see anything. And I I zoom in, I show them. I said look right there. You can see a juvenile sasquatch, uh, sasquatch head to toe. With his, his face is bare, most of his face anyhow, the rest is all hair. You can see his clean, clear as day, and some people can, still cannot see it. It's like their brain is programmed to not accept these things. Have you ever had anything thrown at you on one of your walks out there? I thought I have, but I'm not really sure. I, I, I need to look around like, what was that? But nothing's ever hit me, no. Yeah, and at that point, I mean, you're in the woods and could have been a squirrel dropping an acorn or something. Like, who knows, right? Yeah, right. Well, Gene, any uh, any last thoughts or any anything to, to close? Anything else that you wanted to share? I know I said this before probably, but I'm going to lose some people when I say this because they're going to think I'm kooky. But I'm telling you, I'd say there's between 50 and 100 members of this family. There's that many of them. Well, I know that you say that they stick in this area, but it doesn't mean that their radius isn't quite large, right? So they would likely have a lot of room to move around. Well, this this uh, whole area is only, I think, 330 acres. I'm sure they could, you know, take the power lines and go for miles. But, which I have found footprints on the power lines, but... I don't know how often they do that. Well, I mean, if there's 50 to 100 in that area, that makes me feel good about the fact that if you just look at that cross section, hopefully that means across the country, then that procreation is going well and that they're not going to go anywhere, right? And um, for your audience, if you really want to see one, I would suggest that they do a little research and find out... uh, maybe an old Indian trail or that would be ideal. Something to do with native Americans, because I think that they, once they have a um, spot, they have lived their ancestors have lived. There's a reason why they lived there. Meaning the Sasquatch, meaning there's food, there's water, 
their safety, that they continue to live there. So I would do that and, and find a spot where it's just foliage and just take some pictures and then go home and blow it up and see what you get. Well, Gene, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing. And of course, I look forward to seeing any of the photos that you want to send. Totally up to you, of course. And uh, I know that the, uh, the audience will be very excited to see those as well. And I think it is really, really amazing that you're, I mean, you're literally boots on the ground. You're going out there all the time. So I hope that you do stay in touch and any new happenings that uh, you can keep me in the loop on. Definitely. And I would appreciate your feedback on the photos I sent. I, I certainly will. Absolutely. No, thank you so right. much, Gene. And uh, I hope to talk to you again. I look forward.